day ladies and gentlemen my name is Joy Steven and I am here from the uh, Polensis uh, studios uh, today I am giving out two um, information sessions or information videos uh, the first one is on the importance of knowing immigration regulations before you select your course to go to Canada and the second video is the pitfalls you should be looking at when you are studying, uh, going to study in Canada. So these two videos are primarily for students who have yet to uh, apply for education in Canada. So these are some of the advices um, I would like to offer you. Now let us talk about the path and I'm going to limit myself to the discussion uh, on the path for a two year study program from a community college in Canada. If you have taken a one year course, you can calculate your options based on the information I have provided here. And then you will know if you can, uh, you know, apply for permanent residence through CEC. There are several intakes for Canadian co uh, colleges. Uh, intakes means uh, start date for the course. You can go in for a September intake or a January intake. Uh, or even some institutions offer a June July uh, intake so anytime you want to go to study in Canada there will be some courses which are open for you to select and go make sure you obtain your admissions at least 60 days prior to your uh, start date it is always better to use organizations like Polensis for example who can guide you with the right course and the right options and take care of your immigration interests in Canada as well. Once you get your admissions, you need to arrange for funds through a bank loan or from assets which you currently have or support from your family and then apply for a study permit or a student visa as some of you might say. After you obtain your student visa, make sure you get your pre-departure briefing from your consultant or your agent. Canadian consultants typically provide pre-departure briefing uh, via video or on Skype. Pre-departure briefing is very important because it will also prepare you for applying for permanent residence in Canada with documents which you could require which will not allow you to come back to your home country to obtain them. Then, after your pre-departure briefing, you fly to Canada and you may want to book your tickets at least three days to seven days prior to your course commencement. Don't miss the orientation program offered by several community colleges in Canada on the opening day. It is an opportunity for you to meet with other international students and enhance your network. Now, another common question which I am uh, faced very often uh, while dealing with uh, international students outside Canada is on course selections and I'm just going to give you some general considerations which you may want to consider one of the most important factors is is the course good for you overseas education is good if you take the right course and pursue the right opportunities please do not take extremely tough courses but stick to a curriculum you would like and you are confident about. As an example, I don't encourage students with 55% or a B- to opt for an MBA course. Students must keep in mind that MBA courses are tough uh, and it's mainly for individuals who have a uh, little bit of experience, management experience or students who are extremely bright. Keep in mind that your permanent residence opportunity depends on you passing the course and getting into a skilled job. Typically try to take a course which, is, which you like. A simple course, possibly a two-year diploma in a community college. Also check out the unemployment rate in the city where your college is. It is very, very important. Most people believe that going to Toronto or Vancouver has good opportunities because they are large cities. But these cities have a higher unemployment rate than some small towns in Northern Ontario or Northern BC. 
I have told you several times that skilled work is a necessity for permanent residence. Therefore, if you study in a town which has less unemployment, just like Northern Ontario or even Northern BC, your chances of skilled work becomes much better. Small towns in Canada has unemployment rates sometimes less than 3%. For more course selection options, please contact a Canada-based education consultant who can provide you with more information and better options. One, of, one such uh, Canada-based uh, education consultant is uh, Polensis and you may want to contact, uh, contact them through uh, facebook.com slash Polensis. For the first six months, you will not be able to work in Canada because you do not have the out-of-campus work permit. And please do not expect a campus work because there are limited opportunities in the campus. After you complete your first six months, you can apply for your out-of-campus work permit and obtain it within a month or so. Out-of-campus work permit is typically applied online and your international department of your institution usually provides support. Once you obtain your uh, out-of-campus work permit, you can work out-of-campus for 20 hours a week and at a minimum wage in Canada today which is around $11 you could earn at least $220 a week which translates to around $900 a month this is quite a lot of money considering you uh, you are doing part-time work even while studying once you finish your course you can apply for the post study work permit provided you get through the course Students who do, uh, who do a two-year course usually get a three-year post-study work permit. If you are going to Canada through a Canadian organization like Polensis, you need not worry because they will take care of this when the time comes. The post-study work permit for three years will give you an open work permit allowing you to work in any company for any amount of money for any amount of time. This is an extremely good and important opportunity. Now, how do you apply for permanent residence and when? To apply for permanent residence, you require one year of full-time work in a skilled category. So the work you did while you are a student is not taken into account because it is a part-time job. Once you obtain your three-year work permit, you must get into a skilled job. And if you're going through organizations like Polensis, you should keep in touch with them so that, they, so that you understand the meaning of skilled work. Once you get into a skilled work and you work for a full year, you become eligible to apply for permanent residence under CEC or the Canadian Experience Class. Now, assuming you get into skilled work within one month, of you obtaining your after study three year work permit, you have about two years left to work in Canada after your one year work for us to apply for your permanent residence uh, visa. Polensis will apply for permanent residence visa under the Canadian Experience class. Processing for this will take around one year. And if everything goes well, under this circumstance, you should get your permanent residence visa even before your work permit expires. Now, based on what I have told you, those students who have done one year course can calculate your options. Even if you get a skilled job immediately after you obtain your after study work permit or stay back, your work permit or stay back option will expire even before you become eligible to apply for permanent residence. You may have to return home. After you become a permanent resident in Canada, you get to enjoy all the benefits of a Canadian citizen, except the right to vote. You can apply for citizenship after you live in Canada for three years, if you want. Many students I have talked to do not want to return home until they obtain their permanent residence visa. Therefore, it is important that you take all the documents required to apply for permanent residency even before you leave for study. Some of the documents which may require your presence is police clearance certificate. If permanent residency is one of your aspirations with your desire to study in Canada, then you could find 
a immigration related education consultant like Polensis helpful with your overall service. These organizations obtain admissions in Canadian institutions, help in applying for your study permit or student visa, take care of your Canadian immigration needs in Canada and also prepares you for permanent residency before you leave your home country. Best of all, they provide you in writing your education prospects and your immigration prospects. Make a wise choice and be cautious when wanting to go overseas to study. For most students, the benefit of such a study is only seen with a permanent residence opportunity. I am releasing two videos in the series, this video and another video, avoiding pitfalls for international students to Canada. These two videos may assist you with your course selection, especially if you are a student outside Canada looking for study opportunities in Canada. More videos are slated for release soon, very soon. So click on the subscribe button below if you want to be notified of the new videos being uploaded, which will benefit you. Good luck to all students who wants to make the world your backyard. This is Joy Stevens signing off with wishes from all of us here at immigration4me.com. Thank you.